Hi, my name is Emmanuel Obodo. I'm a specialist biomedical scientist and I'm also a lecturer in biomedical science here in the United Kingdom. I completed my PhD in biomedical science. I have extensive experience working in NHS hospital as a specialty biomedical scientist. I have used these experiences to help a number of people navigate through interview questions and therefore get their dream job as a biomedical scientist. I'm here to help you navigate interview questions, thereby increasing your chances of getting a job as a biomedical scientist. What I would ask is that you like, share, comment and subscribe to our page. Thank you very much. Is, hi everyone, it's me again. I told you you are going to be getting more videos from me. So, another video that I want to make today has to do with, you have issued a blood to a patient and they phoned you from the ward and they said, this patient is having temperature or they complain one or two things, okay? The patient is uncomfortable or as the case may be and there's a suspected of transfusion reaction. And of course, what you need to do when such complaint comes, you, you need to kind of advise them where possible to stop the transfusion, okay? But in the end, it will be a clinical decision, but you have to give that advice, okay? So they can stop the transfusion. So once there is a suspected case of blood transfusion reaction, what do you do? <laughs> so what are you going to do? There's a transfusion reaction, what are you going to do? Easy. What you are going to do, remember for you to issue that unit, possibly you already have the patient sample, okay? So they've sent the sample in the lab, and because they've sent the sample in the lab, and you've run the sample, whether there's antibody or not, whichever situation, okay? We've all done this video, so you can go to the previous videos that I've made about antibody or not. But I'm going to try to be giving a few examples. So let's say you've done the blood group and everything is fine, antibody screening is negative, or even if it is positive, it doesn't matter. So you've done cross match or you've done electronic issue, depending on the situation. So you've issued this compatible unit to the patient. And after some times, they start complaining, maybe it can be transfusion reaction. What are you going to do? What you need to do is to investigate. So how are you going to investigate transfusion reaction? Number one, you need, because you already have pre-transfusion sample, pre, that means you already have sample before the transfusion. The next thing you're going to ask them is to send you another sample. And that sample will be called post-transfusion sample. Okay? Then, of course, they need to send you the remaining sample of that red blood cell. That is the sample bag. Then you take it. Then you need to do investigation using, one, the pre-transfusion sample. Two, post-transfusion sample. Three, the donor cells, which is the unit that you know that the patient was having or is having having while getting that very transfusion reaction. Okay, so what are you going to do? So you start off with a pre-transfusion sample. So you do the blood group, you do the antibody screening. Okay, if the antibody screening is positive, of course you do antibody panel. But you do the blood group because what are you trying to do? You want to confirm the patient blood group. Then you do the antibody screening. You also want to confirm. Is this patient does he have antibody or is it does he not have antibody whichever way so you confirm that if it is positive they have to do antibody panel to find out the particular antibody if it is negative that is fine so you take record of each observation that you've made then after you've done the blood group and you've done the antibody screening the next thing you do is to do dct direct cum test why are you doing direct cum test you are doing direct cum test to see if there's a possibility of any reaction or antibody that may be binding the surface of the red cells okay so you do the dct i've already made a video on that so you do the dct so whether the dct is positive or negative that will determine the next action okay now after that you do the post transfusion you also do the blood grouping you do the antibody screening you also do the dct okay then you record you record all your results does it make sense then the next thing you do is that the donor cell, which is that unit bag, okay, you do the blood group, okay, to also confirm the group of that donor, okay, then you also um, do DCT on that, okay, after you've done the DCT, you also want to know the DCT, whether there's any antibody on the surface of that very red blood cell of the donor, so you determine that as well, the next thing you can then do is to do cross match, so that donor's unit, you have to do the cross match with the donor's unit with the pre and post transfusion sample. So you do the cross match using the donor cells and the pre 
and the plasma of pre and post transfusion sample this is how you investigate it so why are you doing all this investigation you are doing this investigation to find out if there is any discrepancy in any of the things that you initially thought for an example what if the person was maybe you thought the person was um, a positive why the person was actually b positive as the case may be or even maybe the donor cell you thought that the donor cell was o positive but the donor cell was actually b positive you don't know so that is why you investigate this further so if you investigate it further after you've done all these things that i've said if everything appears to be the same there is no mistake anywhere then of course it means that it could be other conditions for an example maybe the patient has had over overload of a lot of red, uh, red blood cells that can lead to that kind of reaction or it could also be because maybe they did not warm the sample up to the remember that the body temperature is 37 so before and the red blood cell you are storing it at four degree okay two to six degree as the case may be now when you store that and if for any reason they had to transfuse the person with that at least bringing the temperature up at least the body temperature or a little bit warm that can also lead to the transfusion reaction so it's not all the transfusion reaction is because of there is something going on wrong in terms of maybe somebody have made a mistake or not it could actually be because maybe the way something has been done the rate at which the transfusion was taken for an example let's say a man or a woman who is about 80 years you need to the transfusion should take longer okay so you should give him more time okay so but when you start transfusing someone who is 80 years you want to complete the red bag for 40 minutes for 30 minutes for 90 minutes that is wrong okay so that the person's system may not you know handle that that can lead to you know um reaction and of course understand the situation whereby maybe somebody is bleeding and you have to just keep pushing the blood if the person continue having that blood the system may not also handle it and that can lead to a reaction so it's not all reaction that has to do with that somebody have made a mistake in terms of giving someone who is a positive b positive no it's not all the case and that's why you investigate this very transmission reaction okay so the outcome will not determine whether it is actually a mistake from you know personnel in terms of issuing a wrong product or as the case may be or has the patient developed any antibody that you did not notice before this whole thing will help you to notice to now know what next to do you know in terms of um what would be the best services that can be given to that patient so sometimes you've done this very uh, transfusion reaction investigation and you didn't find anything maybe there's no any form of irregularities no incompatible unit was given in some cases it can be what we call maybe trolley T R O A L O I, or it could be what we call taco, T A C O. So these are common, okay, when maybe uh, there's a kind of multiple blood transfusion as the case may be. Trally is basically talking about transfusion related acute lung injury, while taco talk about transfusion associated circulation overload so basically once there's a kind of you know kind of multiple transfusion reaction yeah it can result to any of this in most cases when there's a transfusion reaction is most most likely to be a you know one of this anyway here you go so once again if there is a transfusion reaction to investigate it you go to ask them to send you another sample which is post transfusion sample then of course you already have pre transfusion sample okay then you also have the donor cells so both pre and post transfusion sample you do the blood group you do the antibody screening if it is positive you do antibody panel then you also do dct direct cum test then for the donor cells what you do then is to do dct and also do blood group all you are doing is to confirm that the blood group of the patient is what it is and the blood group of the donor cell is what it is then finally you do cross match you know using the patient plasma both the pre and post transfusion plasma sample okay you use it okay and do cross match with the donor cells then whatever thing you get if it is not compatible that explain why it is transfusion reaction if it is compatible then you can look at something else anyway this is how you investigate transfusion reaction here you go Thank you very much till I come back away again. Bye.